Starting is everything when it comes to fitness. So lately we've been going on our Peloton a lot. Obviously it's right after the holidays and the fact that it's right down the hallway just makes everything so easy. And plus with the amazing trainers, I mean, it's hard not to want to work out. Peloton helps you start no matter what level you're at. Whether that's beginner or advanced rides, feel good live DJ rides or artist theme rides, they've got something for you. Peloton bike instructors keep you motivated from day one. They'll show you the basics, help keep you the guesswork out of your workout and encourage you to build from there. Peloton entertainment keeps you moving. Watch your favorite TV shows, live sports as you ride, perfect for those days when you don't want to miss a thing. Wherever you're starting, get moving with Peloton Bike or Bike Plus. Rental at onepeloton.com slash bike slash rentals. Terms apply. All right, welcome back to When Reality Hits with Jackson Brittany. We have a special guest today. Brittany had to work, so I brought in my bestie, Mr. Tom. I'm sorry, Schwartz. He's here. Woo. And it's a big day for him. It's premiere day for him. Yeah. Uh, but we're not going to talk too much about that. We're going to get into some real stuff. Uh, so how you doing? Jax motherfucking Taylor. Back where he belongs in his natural habitat. On the cusp of being on television again where he belongs. That's right. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. <clears throat> I'm feeling great. Uh, excited. Excited for your premiere. Not only that, I know... You got a premiere party going on at Schwartz and Sandy's tonight. Thanks, I got brother. a premiere party going down the street at uh, Jax's. Why are you trying to poach my glory? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, hey I'm just trying to make hey, a buck here. Everybody's got to eat. We all got to Every, eat. Everybody's got to eat. Speaking of that, I know I've been talking to you and Tom and Tom. We got to do a bar crawl. Oh, we got to figure out yeah. something where it makes sense, where the fans can go to all Lisa's places and then mine and kind of do some kind of yeah. thing where well, it's fun for everybody. We've been working on that actually behind the scenes. I don't want to, um, but we're, we're working on a, a formal. Okay, uh, let me know because crawl. I think that would be kind of fun. Yeah, well, dude, you, I got you. You yep. get to go to each bar, you get to sample different foods from each bar, different drinks, and you get yeah. to meet your favorite Bravo Lebs or whatever you want to do. I think there's something there. Yeah. By the way, uh, give a shout out to Jax's and Rocco Studio City. Um, we were there for the we were there for the playoffs. Um, you know, a, a great day if you're a Chiefs fan or a 49ers fan for the rest of America. It was bad. A very sad day. I'm so sad. As you guys know, I am from Michigan. I'm from a suburb of Detroit. And um, yeah, we went pretty far. I'm just happy for the city. The city of Detroit needed this. It was just so nice for the, the fans to come together. Everybody was so happy that we made it this far. Uh, we'll get them next year. Honestly, huge W for the city. Um, I know all the local businesses, uh, especially people in our work of, uh, line of work, benefited from that. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was a hell of a season. You know, our version of Taylor Swift is Eminem, and Eminem was there. It was nice to see that. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we came out uh, <laughs> on the bottom of that one. But it was just awesome to see Detroit, you know, Dude. just go that far. There's so many diehard fans in Detroit. Dude, Detroit showed up for Jackson Studio City. We did. And I think that was our busiest day ever. I mean, we were packed. And I just want to say thank you for everybody that's listening that showed up. It was awesome. We had so much fun. Um, on that note, before we move on, I want to say give a special shout-out to everyone who came into Schwartz and Sandy's the last week. Um, the energy was just undeniable. Heard it was really busy this just, last week. It, there's, I don't know, something, it's like we, it, there's a revitalization process going on. You know, we're revamping, we got a new sound system, DJs are coming in, working on some live music, new food, new drinks. Anyways. And, um, you, and you added TVs today. Yeah, right? we you actually just TVs? added. Yeah, we're, we'll never be a sports bar per se, but we have TVs now for the big games and stuff. And you're adding a DJ, new DJ booth? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Anyways. Awesome. No, that's awesome. So, uh, hey, listen, it's up? premiere day. Oh, uh, I'm not going to talk too much into that, but I no, just want to know, I just want to know, what is your premiere day routine? Like mm. I, after this, I know we, we each got to get out of here because we both got events at our bars, but what is your routine? <sighs> well, I wake up and our theme song, Raise Your Glass High by <laughs> Dina Deedley. It just haunts me from the moment I wake up. It's like is that song kind of like the friend song? I'll be there. It's yes, like she's talking to that song. It, it, it's so good, but too much of a good thing can just destroy you. Um, and I met the writer by the way. He came in and he brought his wife into Schwartz and Sandy's, and uh, I don't know if I don't want to put him on the spot. But you um, say his name. You no, 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 no. But he showed me a giant rock on his finger. And he goes, "Hey, your theme song got me this rock. <laughs> it's a big, beautiful diamond." Uh, but he was very cool. And, um, yeah, I wake up, I worked out, I had a little session with my therapist, Cody from Peloton. Nice. Out, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, no he's, he's actually one of the instructors. Oh. <laughs> I just like him. Um, he's funny. And uh, I like to do Peloton. I got a tonal now. It sounds like we're plugging ads, but I'm really not. We all got tonals. I, I know. Remember, I, we all I, did I, that, that, that. We all went to that gifting suite. We all got uh, you know why I'll never, got tonals. You know why I'll never forget my, how I acquired a tonal? We went to the party. I know, but it was the day that Katie divorced me, so. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. We don't need to get no, into me, that. No, 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 no. We're not getting into that. Me and Katie are in great terms. I love her. I'm always rooting for her. Shout out to her new podcast. Um, just... I love you always taking the high road. I wish I, <laughs> I, I need to take a note with that. That's, that's one of the things I... Um... Well, that's what... And that kind of goes into my next kind of topic. Like everybody, you, you, everybody's cool with everybody right now? Everybody seemed to... I could say loosely everybody's cool right now. Um, Kosher? I, I wasn't... This year was weird for me, guys, because I'm not used to being an outcast. You know me? I'm usually the one... I'm usually the one... Uh, with the diplomacy, mm-hmm. who's trying to bring everyone together, yeah. look for common ground, look for a resolution, look for solutions, you know, um, sometimes to a fault. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes that can be interpreted as being uh, spineless, as the girls say. No. Being compassionate and um, trying to give people a little grace, a pass, understand where they're coming from. I do get frustrated how that gets misconstrued as being uh, spineless sometimes, but I know it's said with love. It's kind of a facetious thing at this point. Dude, it's not in your character to to just create drama or be in drama, be involved in drama. You want nothing to do with that. So seeing you into that atmosphere, it drives you crazy. It's kind of like you feel awkward. You're in a place where you don't want to be. That's so, it's, that's so funny because... Some people, like yourself, I feel like you were born and raised to be on reality television. You know what I mean? Yeah. The world's Me? a better place when Jax Taylor's <laughs> on TV. Let's be real. Me? I. This is a fluke. I did not belong. Although, I think maybe that's one of my assets. I don't know. I'm a guy who on reality TV. This is our 11th season. I don't know if I have any business being in this world, but I do love it. And I love my cast members. Each and every all one of them. them. Yes, all li- of them. Right now, I'm on great terms with everybody. I That's what I was trying to. I get mean, at. listen. You know, I haven't had a lot of contact with Ariana, but I got to say, I got to give her a shout out, kiss a little ass. Um, she just had her Broadway debut, Chicago, I think. Yeah, New York, and, right? Yeah, and um, yeah, how man. incredible is that to be in Broadway, New York? She's just crushing it. I got it. Everyone's kind of thriving right now. Right. I mean, I'll be honest. The past two years, it got bleak. It got bleak for a little bit there for me, uh, and I'm not just talking about stuff you know going on in the show, but with my family. That was I was going to dive into that in a minute, but just like opening, uh, man, just I, I'll keep it positive today. But I gotta say, man, I, I was a basket case for a few years, but something in me has changed. I have a newfound sense of optimism and hope, and um, uh, I think it's I think it, a lot of it's just coming from more consistency and discipline and 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 having habits. You know, routine, routine, it's writing, important. writing, dude, I'm back to, I, I back to like journaling, writing things down when you have like these nebulous, vague ambitions, it's just so much less likely to come true. You know what I mean? Right. But I remember I'm, when you used to journal back in when we had five, five, one, yeah. I'd find your, all your books. You would always buy all these just obscure books, not obscure, just because the titles, I, I didn't understand any of them, but yeah, I would always <laughs> flip through these books and you would write your notes and all that. You used to like, not, I don't say journal, but you would take notes on, on everything. You'd always have notes written down. So that's good to see that you're back doing that again. I think for the first, like for the first year, you know, it was me, you and Tom. And um, I was in shock for the first year I moved here. You know what I mean? I was shocked that I quit a good job with a lot of a lot of potential for promotion within great fringe benefits as like an account executive. But um, you know, when I saw you, you I, I was green behind the gills, wasn't mm-hmm. I? Yeah, you, you were. were like, dude, what what is this here? You didn't know what to make of it's me. It's kind of fun though, because I got to mold you a little bit. Because <laughs> you because by that you weren't jaded, but you had seen and done. You knew your way around the business. Right. You could pretty much call me worm. Yeah. Have you ever watched Rounders? <laughs> that is our exact I'm, dynamic. <laughs> I, I'm worm. <laughs> the outlaw Josie Wales, he always doubles back for a friend. Always, always. If, I, many, if there's a corner to be cut, I'm gonna cut it. How many times have I doubled back for your ass? Ba- literally bailed you out. hundred <laughs> percent. Literally figuratively mentally uh, <laughs> everywhere everywhere uh, i keep coming back for you because i love you i love you too hey not to not to uh harp on this but your family uh your brother he's doing better dude that's so nice just got out of surgery that is, right don't make me cry that is so thoughtful of you to ask well i um, know it was a hard time for you and i know yeah. you're going through a lot with that emotionally yeah. and it's not like they're just a hop skip and a jump away they're literally across america they're in florida so yeah it dude, was far thank you man i really appreciate that i gotta say my brother robert I don't know if he's going to hear this or even knows what a podcast is. It's so funny because they're younger than me, but they're they're like dinosaurs when it comes to technology. They're just now like embracing Facebook. I'm like, well, dude, what? What's you don't? But have- you know what? It's almost like God, I almost wish. That, it's kind of like bittersweet. You always want, but how nice is it to not understand that? And totally. knowing that what we know now, how social media is, wouldn't it be nice to? Not know that for a minute. Wait, to I, not have your life be involved with social media. Dude, Imagine that for a second. I know because it's such a powerful tool, and it is. And it can be, and you know, if you monetize it and you're smart with it, you're savvy. You can make a lot of money, and you can foster a really a strong community. Um, me, I, I, I haven't done a great job with it lately. I think I fell out of social media 
I fell in love with social media around like 2019, late 2019. But I think, I think we're talking again. I think I'm rekindling my love and appreciation for social media. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, you're not you're not on it as much as as you could be, uh, and I think I think that's probably a, a more of a thing that you just want to stay away from it because you don't want to read into it too much. But you're not on it a lot, are you? I mean, do you, do you grace through it daily? Like how many? How long? Okay, what was the word, what I'm trying to say? How much do you think you're on it per day? Um, uh, do I mind the scroll? Yeah. God damn it, I do. <laughs> More than I want to, uh, dude, I'm like, I, for a while there, I'm ashamed to admit this. My, my average screen time was like around eight, sometimes nine hours, much to my chagrin. But dude, I'm usually down to around like five or six. And a lot of it's, you know, I'm actually doing something like I'm making, I'm working on merch. Right. Um, yeah. You're um, always working on merch, dude. You're, 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 that's took, one thing you are good at. You, I, I you're really, really good at it. I took a breather. Um, you getting back into it? Because I, I need I need some help with I that. Just, I mean, I just I, I need I, some new ideas. Well, I, your I, your your hat's simple, but I love the way it fits. It's a perfect fitting hat. I don't know who made those. I gotta. Anyways, this uh, is kinetics. 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 Yeah, uh, they're a clothing line in downtown LA. They're awesome. I use them for everything. Their hoodies are amazing. Yeah. But it's a ba- I'm a basic bar. I, I don't want too much frill. I don't like too busy. I just want to say what it is. No, that that wasn't a slight in any way. It's a, no, no, it's I a know. Beautiful, I, simple hat. I rock your Jax's hat all the time, and I appreciate that. Hey. uh... I saw Katie now has a podcast. Yeah. Um, are, how do you feel about that? Um, I, I think, um, first of all, I'm very happy for her. Right. And uh, I think her and Dana have a great chemistry, um, a solid rapport, and they're kind of snarky and um, very sardonic. And, you know, I think it's going to be a success. No idea what that word means. Sardonic. I used to write those words down in my journal when I live with you. What does that word mean? Use it, it, just, in a it just means like, uh, like sarcastic or kind sarcastic. of like facetious or like, um, it just means like, I guess like an edgy sarcasm. Oh, all right. But are you going to go on it? Uh, oh, I don't, I never thought about it. Do you it. think they would, do you think Katie would ask you on it? Would you go on it? No. <laughs> well, you didn't even hesitate. No. Uh, have you it, talked it's to just, Katie? Have you I, I haven't, I don't really, and, and, and there's nothing negative there. I just yeah. I really have nothing to say. Yeah. Well, me and Katie are cordial. Yeah. We, we, it's, I think, I think it's going to be really okay. Prepare yourself for the stock PR statement. <laughs> okay. I think it's going to be really fun for viewers to see how Katie and I's post-divorce relationship has evolved. Do you know what I mean? I, we, I don't appreciate the little digs that she gives. She gives a lot of backhanded digs. And that, that's kind of like, and, and then you, you go on top and you just kill it with kindness. And you're just kind of like, well, that's okay. I understand. It's kind of like, that's got it, man. I just, I wish I had that in me to like, if someone said something to me and this is not me, I, cause I'll go back and I'll. I'll hit below the belt, but you just like, you can just take it with like a grain of salt, you know, like it, I don't, I know this is an old thing, um, which she said that you look like a couch or something. Oh, that like, was that stick stuck with me. I'm like, how can you say something? That was like the that? sweetest thing she said Have to you me seen in how here. she dresses. That like, was, well, I'm not trying to do a dig at her, but come on. It's not like you are a fashion I think, icon. I think Katie's getting, she's aware she gets roasted alive on the internet for her. Well, fashion I just takes. think, I just um, think, just but, take the high road. You're a grown ass woman. That was the, no, that was facetious. That was like, but like, no, I do sometimes see. She takes like these little, these little Thanks. snide, like chips away at me sometimes, or takes like a, a backhanded compliment here and there. But honestly, I, I don't know, man. It doesn't really get to me that much. Nah, um, we'll, we'll get we'll get out of that. It's, it's okay. No, no, no. We can topic. talk about that. But no, I'm hyped for her, and uh, she's got a lot of good things going on, and uh, it's it's nice to be on good terms with Katie. We have some, <laughs> we have some really weird situations. Um, that we worked through this season. I think um, it's going to be fun for people to watch. Oh, really? Yeah. So you, you two kind of... Yeah. Dude, it's a good season. I know I'm supposed to be promoting Vanderpump Rules. Yeah, I, promote honest, it. Are you, excited? This, are you happy about it? Are you excited I'm about it? Are you stoked about it? Are but at the nervous? same time, I'm a, I've been a little nervous about over exposure. Right. Hyper saturation or like, um, dude, it's like, it's, it, you know, we, it was a, it was a fucking sensation this year, and, and I think it's going to be a killer season, but sometimes I worry about overexposure. Is it safe to say that we're kind of, we can stop talking about the word? You, you know what of all? I, I don't even want to say it anymore. Don't, it's just, don't say I don't, it. I'm not even saying it. When I hear it, my, I feel like it's, it's a, it's my a, mind goes numb. Everyone's moved on. Well, almost everyone. We've all moved on, right? Almost everyone. I think so. Um, and, um, there's some people that are still living in the past. But um, I mean, I even moved on. I like, hey, Tom's been in my bar doing karaoke like crazy, and I yeah, love it. Yeah, I love it. I know, you know, you all got to move on. You I, didn't kill anybody, okay? Life is life's short. You move on. You make mistakes, and that's it. It's been a year. It's yeah, time to t- it, stop talking about it. Yeah. If your name's not Ariana, it's time to move on. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs>
When reality hits is fueled by Factor. Factor delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every day super easy. Always be ready with pre prepared, chef crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. This week, our recommendations are the roasted garlic filet mignon shrimp and roasted broccoli, garlic chai potatoes, and scallion sour cream. And the garlic herb roasted mushrooms with olive oil, mashed potatoes, roasted green beans, and tomatoes. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and more. More, plus over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash realityhits50. Use code realityhits50 to get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while subscription is active. That's freaking amazing. Again, that's code realityhits50 at factormeals.com slash realityhits50. It's 50, you'll get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while subscription is active. Hey, I got a, a really random question from me from a fan. What is the craziest thing that a fan has sent you? What's the craziest thing that a fan has sent you? Hi, Jax. Huh? What are we doing sitting here doing a podcast all these years <laughs> later? We should have. Sorry, I mean, man. I don't mean to not answer your question, but I, as I just was looking into your eyes, and I'm thinking about the time where we spent two days scrounging, selling things in pawn shops, scrounging up every dollar we had so we could get a new computer screen so I could continue submitting you on modeling jobs. Oh, my gosh. Let's tell the story. So I had an iPod shuffle yeah. that I got for my birthday. <laughs> And Tom and I were down to our last down dollar. Down I don't even think we had a dollar. <laughs> I might have had loose change. I might have had two hundred and thirty dollars <laughs> in my account if I on a good day. We spent so we had to shuffle, and we really, really needed a Compu- new computer. We, oh no, I had uh, I, I had the I had the computer. I had, had the, the brain. brain. Yes, we needed. A, we broke my computer screen. I think in a fit of rage. By the way. I never spaz out, but I think I had a really bad run on comp- online poker with money I couldn't afford to lose one day, and I just lost it. There may have been some alcohol involved, but then it was it was just a little crack, but um, we needed a new one. We needed a new one, and we literally took, and I say all day, I'm not stretching the truth, we were going back and forth. Mind you, this is an iPod shuffle. This is something that was probably $60 at the time, yeah. maybe, Yeah. and we went to a pawn shop to look for a PC screen. Yeah. <laughs> It took all day, and just so Tom could submit me on model. Was it model mayhem? Model, model mayhem? Mo- no, mo- well, LA casting. LA casting. Model, model mayhem. mayhem. Let's not forget tr- old, old faithful Craigslist. Oh, Craigslist. Yeah. So Tom would submit me for jobs, and then whatever jobs I give him, I would give him a cut of it. And he you give me ten, sometimes ten, sometimes twenty percent. Yeah, whatever it was, it got. Because you and Tom, it's, it, I don't think people realize that you guys actually had a pretty successful modeling career. But there was a time when towards I met you. End. When I met you guys, you guys were slumping. Yeah, towards the end. We just didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And it was like, mind you too, in the modeling industry, there's no union. You're not protected. So if you do a job for X amount of dollars, they can take a year to pay. They don't have to pay right away. So you're like, literally, yeah, you could be working a lot, but they're not paying you. By the time they do pay you, you're so behind on your bills. It's kind of like, it was just so annoying. So these Craigslist jobs and these model mayhem jobs that Tom would get me, you know, just through him, they would pay you that day. So it was just kind of like, so like a normal job through my agency would pay, just for instance, I'm just giving you a number, say $2,000. I would do the job for a thousand cash knowing that I would get paid that day. And it was worth 2000 to me, if it makes sense to you. Yeah. So, and, and by the way, for the, for the uninitiated, Initiated like uh, trust me, two thousand dollars is a lot of money. You know, you when in you're those out, days it was. it's like it, like people are thinking, dude, what are you complaining about? You you, you there's days where you make two thousand dollars in one day, dude. You get the check two months later. First of all, twenty percent off the top. Sometimes there's an extra manager fee, right. so maybe it's thirty percent. Also, you the, pay taxes. The, the agent, the taxes, and the agents take the like they take uh, maintenance fees, right? Yeah, uh, they take digital uh, uh, housekeeping fees, all kinds of. BS I'm telling fees. you, it sounds awesome, but dude, it's like it's not. It's tough. Unless you're a big time model, it's absolutely brutal. I had this conversation. I don't mean to cut you off. I had this conversation with, uh, I think we did it last week. There's probably a handful of male models in this world that were super, super successful. The Tyson Beckfords, the Marcus Schenkenbergs, like those guys. There's a couple guys that have made it, but no, for the most part, men don't, there's no supermodel it, man. It's really. streaky. You can have a killer, you, you, you can have a run for like two, three years where you make, you know, you're making six figures, maybe up, maybe up there in seven. I don't know, but dude. 
It was it's, a tough run, but we got by. We got hey, by. We got by. And I got to tell you, it was some of the funnest times of my life when I was living with Tom and Tom. Yes, we had no money, but those were the times it was fun because we just didn't care. And we didn't really have a pride or an ego. We just didn't care. We, we, we never said no. We, yeah, we, never, we, we took any job we could get. And, um, man, we really went through it together. That's, you and Tom really took me under your wings. You guys helped me get um, legit, legit um, agents. You helped me get a good modeling agency, commercial uh, acting agencies. And, um, you guys took me on some of my first castings. I'll never forget Jax. I'll never forget. We went on a high end modeling casting when you were with LA models, you know what <laughs> right, I'm going to yeah, say? I know you're going to bring up. Dude, Jax wanted to kill me. So he took me out. I'm, I think I'm, this is one of your first auditions. Yeah. And it was downtown, man. So it was a food. I think it was fashion for, week. It was for fashion week. And I'm in there. I'm like, Oh my God, these are legit models. And I'm sweating. My hands are clammy. Cause I have one corny ass headshot headshot, I'll, mind you. And, um, I, we go in there, you know, Jax goes ahead of me. I go in there. I do like a little walk. He asked me about like my modeling career. And I'm like, um, you know, I've never really done any modeling. I'm more of an actor. And Jax was in earshot and then he didn't say anything. And as we're walking, I'm like, what the f- are you doing to me, man? <laughs> so I grew up. You grew up when you do when you come out to LA and you and you do the acting, the model thing. You you say you do it all, and then you know yeah. what? When you get the job, you figure it out afterwards. Do you fly a plane? Hell yes. Can you ride a horse? A hundred percent. Yep. Can you drive stick shift? Sure. You say it all, and then if you get the job, then you can panic. Yes. But you lie to their face, and in those days, they couldn't fact check you. There was no Google. There was no yeah. You know, you can tell them whatever you wanted, and they believed it. So the funniest part is, I had zero acting credits or experience. At at the time, but I'm like, yeah, I'm more of an actor. I was just reading Stanislavski on the way here. Um, yeah, no, but I guess I could rock down the runway for you if the price is right. And the, just, the casting director's like, thanks for uh, f- uh, penciling us in, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people realize. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they care either. How hard we grinded, dude. I, I would. I would sometimes wake up five in the morning, drop food off for um, love catering. Yeah. Then I would hit three to four auditions a day, commercial acting, modeling, you know, then I'd pick the food up at the end of the day. Then we would go bartend. Mm -hmm. So I would literally be working all day, all night, grinding it out and still barely getting by with the exception of the occasional commercial where it would give us temporary financial relief, you know, 10 K five K. But then again, the same thing, we were so behind on credit cards and and everything else in life, student loans, whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah. If you got a big check, it was nice. But in hindsight, we had so many bills because we were so behind that it was just kind of like a it was a quick yes you're excited because you're working but at the end of the day you're like damn i'm never ahead of the game i've never, like, never had, had like game. a bank account yeah you know yeah. what we used to do which is cruel and unusual in hindsight jacks remember back in the day we would when we would get overdraft fees oh, overdraft God. statements we would staple it to the wall and shame each other <laughs> Dude, Bank of America loves sending me overdraft fees. Man. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Dude. They knew me by name and they're like, hey, you back again? And then we would cash. Then we would cash. And then Tom and I knew we had overdrafts. Like we knew we wouldn't cash our checks. So we would go to Western Union to cash our checks. Yep, that was a Jax Taylor signature move. Because I'm like, I'm not going to go to Bank of America. They're going to they're gonna take money out of my account. So I'm just yeah. going to go to Western Union and cash this. So freaking depressing. Yeah. It was so depressing. But it was, honestly, it was it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. And it I, was. I wouldn't trade it for the world. It no. Was, it's, it, I know it's horrible and I don't want to romanticize. We were in a, a I don't, I think we were almost at poverty level or below. And um, I got to say, man, I don't want to romanticize that, but it was some of the best times of my life. Just being in LA, finally taping, taking that leap of faith. If you're listening to this and you've been on the fence, don't wait till it's too late. And you're like, man, what if I would have just taken that shot? I, I, and I'm not just saying that I'm on a reality show. I don't, by no means have I made it, but if you're thinking about it and you're in, in, in there's something inside of your heart that tells you, I want, I want to pursue the arts. I want to be a musician, an actor, a YouTuber, an influencer. Just can do it. Just can do it. If it doesn't work out, you can go back to your other job. I don't think necessarily you have to move to California anymore. No, no, anymore. And, I, no. and if you are, again, Tom and I were talking about this on the way here. Literally save your money. Save it. Because I tell you what, as soon as you cross that border to California, they got you. Dude. They got you. <laughs> they got you by the balls. I, I mean, it, it's so hard to save money here. I mean, you literally, and when I say you have to have your hand in five or six different pockets, yeah. you really, really do. You got to diversify. You, you got to. You got to hustle here. I mean, especially if you want a family, if yeah. you, you buy a home. I mean, they really, really get you here. So, yeah, I, you definitely come here if you got the dream. But if you can do it at your parents' house or if you can do it in middle America somehow, some way with obviously technology is so different. 
different now. Um, I feel like people can make it kind of wherever they are now. You don't necessarily yeah. need to be here for auditions anymore. Yeah. Um, do it there. But like I said, if you do come here, the best advice I can give you is uh, do your research. Do your research. Find out who made the mistakes before you. Save your money. Um, and, and be careful who you trust because everybody's out here is trying to climb to the top. In, um, but yeah, that's all I got to say that about that. But Dude, let's get back to... Um... <clears throat> hey, we're going to Montreal. Oh, we're going to Montreal. We're going to a place called Pangea, right? Is that the name of the place? Oh. Pangea? Uh, I don't know. I think it's called Pangea. But, um, you should come hang out with us. We're doing an appearance in Montreal. <sighs> we're back to appearance mode. Oh, my God. It's been a while since you and I have been <laughs> on appearance mode. Tom and I used to get We're no nuts. spring chickens, but no. We used we're... to have a lot of fun in appearance mode. Back when Banner Pump Rules started, we went on these just these runs. And when I say runs, we would go to Vegas. We'd go to Texas. We'd go to Florida. We'd go yeah. to Ohio, Michigan, any state that would really have us, really. And we would just go have a lot of fun and... Get drunk and just make bad decisions. I think we've grown up. We've matured. You got a kid now. You got a family. Oh yeah, we're business aspect. owners. By the way, how 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 has being a new bar owner been? I know it's listen. If 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 not handled with uh, finesse and balance, it can be detrimental to not only your personal life but your love life. It can just wreak havoc because it's the late hours. You end up drink, inevitably drinking a little more than you usually would. Yeah, that's and it's the just, problem. I, it, it honestly. And people I, are always buying you drinks, and you feel bad if you don't do it. And I have it now down to where my bartender's like, give me water. Give me water. Like, do a shot of water. Well, but then they start smelling it. They smell it. Yeah. They'll give you the smell check. And if they're on their honeymoon, if they've come all the way from Australia, I feel terrible. And I'm like, you know what? My liver can handle one more. Also, I only do. That's why I implemented half shots. I'm down to quarter shots now. Uh, <laughs> quarter shots? Yeah. You should offer that on the menu. Like, do quarter shots. Well, uh, I, have shots. It, I, I have it. Oh, I'm, this is going to be at Jax's too, but we have a signature shot that's uh, off the menu. It's the Schwartzy. Do you know what that is? Oh, I'm going to offer that at Jax's. Okay, I'll get we, it's It's Tom's Good Love and Whiskey. That's our house whiskey. And you get um, one of my, this is a company I invested in, Passion Passion Tree Seltzer. They're freaking amazing. You get it. So you get a mini seltzer, a half shot, and you get a dollar scratch off. What? It's the Schwartzy, baby. That's a great. 12 bucks. I think I'm going to, I got to get some Tom's Good Loving for my bar. Oh. So I can have, I want, what I want to do is I want to have a drink from Sir. I want to have a drink from Tom Tom. I want to have a drink from Schwartz and Sandy's. And that way, when we do our Vandercrawl, you can go to each place and you can try different people's drinks. So if that way, if people get a chance to go to your bar, not mine, they can try something from my bar and, you know, or get merch, vice versa. Yes. We're going to cross pollinate, yeah. cross promote. I think it's a good idea. You know, Tom's Good Loving's whiskey is, it's good and all, but you know what we're, I'm really been craving lately? What's that? Some Jax's motorboat and rum. <laughs> That's such an obscure reference for the deep hardcore Vanderpump <laughs> rules fans. <laughs> Google it. Um, uh, hey, I'm, I'm just making sure that I'm getting this right. Oh, here we go. We are. We Tom and I are going to. Here we are. I'm looking at it right now. It's called Pangea. Just guys, to let you guys know. We are going uh, Saturday, February. What is that? 17th. Sorry, I couldn't read that. February 17th, Tom and I will be at Pangea, that is in Montreal, sponsored by Heineken and 818. Uh, we're going to have some good time there. We're super excited. This is our second time to Montreal. We had a great time our first time. I love Montreal. It's beautiful. It feels kind of the European. Historic, uh, it's well, steep well, to cobblestone streets. It's just it's such a cool city, man. What was that? Main Street or down? What was the name? Like it was like old churches and stuff. Yeah. Oh, the, the beautiful um, the cathedral, uh, Gothic architecture, and just I'm a sucker for cobblestone streets. and the food and the drinks. I mean, they go over the top in Montreal. Canada's just got some amazing people. They're just such good people there. We had yeah. so much fun. We may or may not have hit a strip club. <laughs> uh, but the, but the thing about strip clubs there, it's not as like crass or like sophomoric or whatever, whatever the word is. It's not like it's Friday. It's more, it's like a, it's more normalized there. Yeah. It's more mainstream. Right. Right. It's, it's not, not like you tacky. go, not that there's anything wrong with going to strip clubs. Um, anyways, no, so we're anyway, getting off subject. Sorry here, about dude. that. So guys, say if you live in Montreal, uh, uh, save the date, February 17th. And, uh, we will be there at Pangea. Um, I think it's almost sold out to be honest. Dude. Uh, it's, it's doing really well. Starting is everything when it comes to fitness. So lately we've been going on our Peloton a lot. Obviously it's right after the holidays and the fact that it's right down the hallway just makes everything so easy. And plus with the amazing trainers, I mean, it's hard not to want to work out. Peloton helps you start no matter what level you're at. Whether that's beginner or advanced rides, feel good live DJ rides or artist theme rides, they've got something for you. Peloton bike instructors keep you motivated from day one. They'll show you the basics, help keep you the guesswork out of your workout and encourage you to build from there. Peloton entertainment keeps you moving. Watch your favorite TV shows, live sports as you ride, perfect for those days when you don't want to miss a thing. Wherever you're starting, get moving with Peloton Bike or Bike Plus. Rental at onepeloton.com slash bike slash rentals. Terms apply. 
She talks about etiquette. Get your fingers out of your mouth. She talks about where to find a deal. You know, if you sell me something on Instagram, I buy it. Whoever markets to me does a fabulous job. She talks about the economy. We used to joke that'll be the thing to send them to therapy. Okay, we're creating jobs. Can we look at it that way? She talks about parenting. These kids want to come home. They don't want to leave. They don't want to drive. They want to stay in the womb. Let's talk with Heather Dubrow every Thursday on Podcast One or wherever you get your podcasts. My next thing I wanted to talk about was, we're going to get into a little bit of uh, news here, is the far- The only reason I'm saying this is because I was booted off a plane. The farting on the plane. Did you hear about this? this a plane had to go back. Steve, uh, fix me. Uh, am I saying this right? The plane had to return back to the terminal because somebody had such bad gas. This, this is correct. This is on okay. People.com or the magazine and the airline. This is on American Airlines. The flight had to turn around. How because- far were they from the actual terminal? Because when they kicked me off the plane, I want to say we were about 50 yards uh, from the gate. <laughs> have, you, have you been candid about what happened? Have you told your listeners? Yeah, I told can, everything. Can you, I, I, can you break it down? Give me like the 30-second... <sighs> Okay, so I was on JetBlue Mint, which oh. we love. And I still love JetBlue the very much. The best first class in the biz. They do. Forget and about it. Forget about you it. You know, it was 6 in the morning, okay? And I, I'm not complaining, but it was 6 in the morning. My my seat only reclined. It didn't go back up, right? So they're like, sir, you need to... I go, it's not working. I don't know what you want me to do. I, I It's not reclining. I go, they're like, you're going to have to go back to coach. I go, well, I paid three thousand dollars to sit here and i it's a six it's a five hour flight and i got a child that i got to take care of all day i go i can't sit coach i'm sorry and they're like well sir then you're gonna we're gonna have to bring the plane back i go because of the the plane was the seat was reclined the whole way and they made it out to be like i was fussy and i didn't want to move my seat but i'm sorry you're dropping three thousand maybe three thousand and change on a seat for yeah. JetBlue mint yeah i want to sit that it's a five hour flight. That's a lot of money. So that was the reason. So they had to return it on, but they made it to be a, I didn't make any commotion or Did anything. Did you throw a fit? No, 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 no. I walked off the plane and I just said, listen, I, I need to, uh, you need to rebook me. But this situation is a little different. This guy had a full on fart. Well, it sounds like he, he had. He was gaseous. Okay, so uh, well, so did somebody complain, Steve? Did the, did the, it must have been a horrid gas. It must have been medicine farts. So uh, there's a quote on here. We all breathed a sigh of relief when he was removed. A witness to the gassy passenger wrote on Reddit. Apparently, he aggressively and continuously uh, acted in such a way that it was uh, egregious, detrimental, egregiously detrimental, Tom. To uh, everyone's well-being, I'm seeing more of these stories, and I don't know if it's because I hang out with Jax Taylor and my phone listens to him. <laughs> it's a hotly contested I, subject because me and I'm like Jax. Uh, it's common courtesy. You don't fart on a plane. There are exceptions, maybe. What so if you I, have a sore stomach? Okay, that okay. It depends. You got to maybe let one out, and if it smells bad, no more. Okay. And I what, what I do is I go to the bathroom and I always buy. Let's shout out Poopery right now. You've saved so many flights for me. <sighs> if you, you have, you're their biggest endorser. I if know. Poopery, give this guy some money. Got a sponsorship yet? Yeah, you need to be the full no, but, sponsor. For but, but listen, poop with confidence. You get a little Poopery or something like that. You go in there, maybe you fart, hang out for a little bit. Um, little how's your father? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Saw it in Austin Powers. Let me ask you this. So uh, uh, this gets into my next thing. I'm like. 
I, 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 maybe when I was younger, I would, but at my age now, I'm not holding in a fart. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not holding one in. Okay. All right. Hold on. I'm not going to get a sore stomach Which, because Jax, I don't want to upset somebody. First of all, me and you, we're, we're not always flying first class. Let's be honest. Say, let's say you're, let's say you're row third, third, your seat 32 E. Yeah. We're flying to Dallas. Okay. And, uh, you know, Spirit Airlines. It's packed flight. Okay. You're 32 E, you're in the middle seat. You're farting. Uh, first of all, I will never, never, ever be in a middle seat ever. Okay, well, I will not. I will cancel my job. So if I am farting, if I'm in the aisle or the window, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, dude, if your stomach hurts, I, 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 dude, I'm not going to be like, oh, I better hold it in. So the guy behind me, I, I'm sorry, I'm just not going to hold it's it. Funny in. you say that because I. So like a lot of my friends that are in the business and they're like, yeah, dude, no one's no. One, my friends aren't bougie, but they're like, I, I got a thing. Like, I, my, my, what do they? How do they say it? My, my, my protocol is if I'm in first class and I'm paying a lot of money. I'm going to let the farts fly, you know, but if I'm coach and I, you know, I'm, I'm smushed between two other people, I'm going to be respectful. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> what do you think about that? This I is, listen, <laughs> we hey, listen I, we're going to move on from this, but Hey, listen, I'm not saying that I'm ripping farts the whole time. It's just like, it'll be like one big fart and then I'll let it go. I, I think that's fine. We'll move on from this, but, but before, I'm sorry. I'm not holding on to a fart. I'm not. Well, also the, you know what they say? Never trust a fart. <laughs> Guess what happened to me today? <sighs> I got jury duty. Damn. I got jury duty. Have you gotten jury duty yet? Jury yeah. duty. Have you gotten it yet? I'm going to knock on one. I haven't got jury duty All right, yet. Hey, let me ask you this. You're growing up, right? You, you're in some big trouble. You're going to court. You see Jax Taylor <laughs> as one of the jurors. Oh, my God. <laughs> what do you do? Do you just say, just send me to jail now? <laughs> just handcuff me now. It's over. Um, jury duty, man. I, I was like, you know, if I didn't have a child, a business, a couple TV shows, a podcast, and all this stuff going on, child, like my kids keep it. I'm like a basic a chauffeur right now. My kids got so many things going on. Plus, I'm just trying to have a life. I, Wait, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind doing jury duty. Hold on. This, you, just, you, just, um, you just prompted an interesting question. Because now, dude, you are a family man, you know? You're yeah. married. You got the kid. Um, now that you're going back into this strange, bizarre world, do you have any apprehensions about being on reality television again? You know the pitfalls that come in this business. You have to radically expose every aspect of your life. You don't have to, but it's like an unspoken uh, uh, bond or handshake you make with your executive producers. How are you feeling about that? Uh, you know, obviously, I've been off TV for a couple of years now, and, and the world that has left us now, it, there's, there's a new Jax Taylor. Let's just say that. It's a new Jax Taylor. And I definitely had to keep it in the back of my head uh, about, you know, how I act and everything like that. And, um, yeah, of course, you know, I'm a father now. And you know what? The, obviously, because of the internet, Vanderpump Rules is never going to die. My kid's going to look up one day. He's going to watch this one day. And the only thing I can say is... Well, I was before you, and I was a kid, and I was an idiot. But I thought you were going to say you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> that too. You're welcome. Well, let's see all your toys. You're welcome. It's uh, like you've. I mean, but dude, you're no stranger to being vilified. Right. Um, you've been called an asshole. I've every been called every name in the book. Every name in the book. But it's like, <sighs> how do you do that, it now that, with a child? Is what you're asking. You 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 shoot first, ask questions later. But I do. I feel like. I feel like that's also what gives good TV. You're you're, you know that saying um. Like a wolf in sheep's clothing. I'm a hundred percent a wolf. No, 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 no. I was not I, anymore. I think I think you're a, a sheep in wolf's clothing because I think you have a good heart and you're you're pretty much a pure soul. But on the surface, you just you make snap judgments. You 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 get cranky, yeah. uh, crotchety. Yeah. You lash out at people. You're yeah. very fucking reactive. Yeah, I'm not trying to come down on you here. You're, you're just not. one of the most reactive people. It's okay, but you're my friend. You're allowed yeah, to say this. I love you. This is said with love. But um, I, I've noticed a change. You're not as reactive anymore. You, I see you take a moment, take a breath, or, well, I, or am I wrong? No, yeah. you're 100% right. And I, I, I have to thank, you know, obviously Brittany on that. I have to thank my, my son. You know, having a kid, you have to think twice. Yeah. And that was my problem. I never thought twice. I yeah. just did. And then, you know what, there's, and then I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. But, you know, having a kid now, you definitely think twice about what you do, you yeah. know? And again, like he has to, you know live with the fact that Jack Taylor's his dad. So, yeah. you know, I can only go from here on out and be a good person from here on out. I can't change the past. And even though if I want to, I don't know if I'd, I'd change the full past. I mean, there's a couple things I would change, but more or less, I mean, I wouldn't be what I, I wouldn't have what I have today if I didn't do the things that I did. So I feel like everything, you know, 
Very stoic of you. Played its part to why we're here. Yeah. Um, you know, there's totally. some, there's some different paths that I wish I would have took that I didn't. But you know what? It, it led me to the person that I am today. Yeah. And I feel like I've grown a lot. You know, I've, you know, um, I feel like not being on Vanderpump Rules for the last couple of years was definitely great for me. Um, I needed that. I needed to clear my head. I, th- I look at the silver lining. There, I definitely went into a hole for a while. Yeah. Because I was like, you know what? My life was just all this. And then all of a sudden, it stopped. And I was like, in the beginning, I said this before, I was ecstatic. I didn't want to be part of it anymore. But then when it set in, when the reality, no pun intended, set in, I was like, now what am I going to do? And then instead of being a victim and pouting, I said, you know what? I'm going to create a show. I'm going to create a show. I called Alex Baskin. Yeah. I go, I have an idea. Meet me at a hotel. It was a rainy, cold day. I've explained this, but said this before. I have a show idea. And to be honest, what I wanted to do is be a producer and create shows. I thought I just wanted to develop the show and maybe pitch it to other people. But then when Alex was talking, he's like, you need to be in the show. This is for you. Yeah. And I thought, okay, we're going to do this a different way this time. This is going to be kind of a newer version. People like to see growth. Yeah. They want to see where we've been and what yeah. we've gone through. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm excited about I'm, the new show. I, obviously, it's announced. We can talk about it now. The Valley. We're very excited about it. Uh, and, by the way, uh, I, I don't know if you're, you're, you're listening. Well, your listeners are probably my listeners. There's a lot yeah. of cross-pollination, but I know, I'm know i friends with everyone on your cast. You are. And these are these are all solid people. I mean, uh, you know, I, I've, I've known them for a long time. I think you guys have great chemistry. I think it's going to be a hit, man. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but I think I saw Alex say it. So we do have crossovers. Uh, there's people from Vanderpump coming on the Valley. There's people from Valley going on Vanderpump. So just a little cross pollination. Yeah, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. But cameos. Uh, maybe. It's, it's you kind of have to because we are all friends, regardless of what everybody thinks. We are all friends. We all hang out. Whether you're on the Valley or on Vanderpump, we're all whether friends. whether you're filming or not filming. Although with Vanderpump, obviously, there's never been a chasm like there was this year within the group. But, you know, I think everyone knows that now. And you, you see how we try and, re- well, I try and rehabilitate that and bring everybody back together, I guess, this year. But anyways, um, yeah, man, we're, we're this is like, it's this. we're all real deal friends, man. I always have to remind people. I do. I know. We're, people we, just think we're like, is that real? Like, yeah. And I think that's, again, that's why Vanderpump Rules and you'll see the Valley will be so successful because we are not casted people. This is not like, all right, we like Tommy. Uh, Susie looks good. We yeah. can have Susie hook up with this. That's not what we do. And I think that's that can, so That can work sometimes, too. Like some of the housewives, you know, they're, they weren't besties before, but the shows are fucking phenomenal. Because they all are bred from the same cloth, though. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it works for them. It's not yeah. like they're just trying to play characters. They're all those characters. They're yeah. just put into that group. Wait, Jax Taylor, my dear friend I've known. For the, do you watch other shows on Bravo? No. You don't? Mm. I've been getting into Housewives of Salt Lake City. No. And I've been watching um, Housewives of Beverly Hills recently. I, Dude, I totally get its appeal, man. You want to watch something that'll really tug at your heart? Yeah. You watch... Um, uh, Love on the Spectrum. Oh, it's killer. Oh, I love, my love, love God. on the Spectrum. Katie got me. I'm that. obsessed. Yeah. And I love every single one of them. And I, I just, I'm like, they see the world so, like, I'm, I'm getting emotional right now. Like, I watched the last episode. And I want to spoil it. When they were start singing the Lion King song. And, like, he, he, they, he took his girlfriend to Africa. And then the older guy. I love the older guy. It, remind, it was just, he's such a sweet guy. Like, everybody is so, like, I literally just, like, God, I just want to live in their head. I want to, they just see the world. God, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting choked up just thinking about it. Yeah. But it's, it's just, the, if you haven't purity, seen the purity, Love the on the Spectrum, or wait, am I saying it right? Love on the Spectrum? Yeah. Watch it. And then also, I think it's Down with Love. That's another one too. But they're so, you watch those and you'll just, you just want to, I don't know. It just, it makes you feel so, what's the it's, word? It's a feel good show. What's the word? I need one of your big words. It's uplifting. It's, um, you just uh, feel good about yourself and you just uh, want to, you just, I just want to be friends with all of them. I just, I just, yeah. I really, really do. They're all such great people and great human beings. And I hope, I, I mean, they're just, just amazing people. Anyway, I'm choked Whoa, up. Look at you. I think, I think having a kid made your heart oh, grow by. It's, it's how, how one of the sizes? sweetest shows ever. How many, how many sizes did the Grinch's heart grow by? Uh, three times. <laughs> three <laughs> times, Jax. I think his is around three or four. Uh, it's my favorite show. And I also just watched Griselda last night. I, I binged it. Holy hell, that, great, that woman was nuts. Oh, I don't know. Griselda. Oh, oh is, is that, uh, is Sophia that, Vargara plays she's her. A, she's a beauty. And I tell you what, I don't, if you've watched, watched any documentaries on Pablo Escobar, Pablo Escobar said the only man he was ever afraid of in life was Griselda. Wow. So that just goes to show you something. You guys got to watch that show too. Should we do a poll like they do on Watch What Happens Live? How many of you are excited to see Jax Taylor back? Oh, that's right. Let me talk about that. I, I forgot to mention that. Oh. Um, yeah, I guess we can all talk about that now that I am back on not only uh, the Valley, but I will be on Vanderpump Rules as well. Uh, I'm super excited to be back. I think, the like I said before, the world needs Jax Taylor on TV. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, you're where you belong. I am where I belong. It's good you're to be good back. At, you're good at what you do, amongst other things. You, you know, and I have some great scenes together. We do. We had some fun this season. Man. Yeah, it was and, fun. Yeah. Um, we had some explosive, not me and you, but you and some other people had some of semi course. explosive moments that we won't talk about. I had some stuff that I was just carrying around for a long time. Yeah. And then I needed to get off my shoulder, but I did, and I was happy with what I said. And, uh, yeah, but I'm excited to be back. I think the, I think the audience is going to really, really appreciate uh, uh, both shows. I really think they're going to see some growth. There's a lot of I can't believe, I can't get over it. The, the amount of drama that's happening on the valley after the fact because yeah. we are done filming. Yeah. Um, now there's so much crap going on. I'm they witnessing wanna, it in real time in some of the group chats. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Some of the stuff is happening. I'm shocked that they don't have the cameras back up like they did with you guys because the stuff that's happening on our show right now is. It's, I didn't think that was going to happen. That wasn't my intention. My intention was to show everybody on the next stage of their lives. And I feel like everyone's diving back into our old ways. Not everyone. Certain people are yeah. diving back into the old ways. And yeah. I just was like, that's not why I created the Valley. I created the Valley to see where we're going now, to see the growth. Are we going to, are we going to see glimpses of the old Jacks? Ugh. I, be honest. I mean, he's, I tell you what, he's I'm never going to be able to get he's, rid of him. I know. I know. He's there. I have to I work him. my ass mm -hmm. off. Like I said, I have to read. I have to read what it says on my arm for my dad. Make yeah, good choices. Make I good have choices. to read that every day. It's hard for me. It is. I have to make the good choices. Take because, the good with the bad when you're friends with Jacks. Because because like I I'm like worm man. I'm yeah. I, you know I'm, if there's an easy way out, if you can cut a corner, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you've never seen Rounders, watch it. Watch the, Rounders. It's the greatest poker movie of all time, and just objectively a killer movie with an unbelievable soundtrack. Oh yes, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what else? So, uh, what do you? Hey, what are you doing special for your bar tonight? Is there something that? Oh you yeah, we, we got a watch party. Right, um, watch party tonight. We're gonna do um, a special event, something romantic for Valentine's Day. Oh, up, you are nice. Until, we're gonna have we're, we're gonna have a prefix dinner, and then up after ten, we're gonna lean into like the single life. You know, if you have a bitter ex, somebody that just drove you crazy, you come by. We'll have some specialty shots. We'll have a DJ. It's gonna oh, be a nice. good vibe. If you guys haven't been there, the food is absolutely amazing. Amazing. Thanks, dude. Um, I love the food. Oh, you guys thanks. always take such great care of me there, and your bartenders are super nice. Everybody's super um, cool. everybody's just fun. It's a beautiful establishment. If I had one complaint about it, it's the location. That's just because I live in the valley and I hate going over the hill. But uh, other than that, your place is awesome. I'm a hermit, man. I don't ever want to leave my apartment anymore. It's unless tough. it's like jet setting around the world. And plus, it's just like every, as soon as you it look at your social media, as soon as you look at the news, it's just depressing. There's always something negative going on, you know. <sighs> And it's just tough to be happy. I mean, you want to be informed, know what's going on in the world, but you can, you know, in moderation, you take breaks. Like, you don't need to know everything. I think everyone knows this by now. Like, you don't need to know everything that's going on in the world. You don't have to be up to date on every show, every headline. I think, you know what? 2024 is the year of... The year? Yeah. Chill, <laughs> chill. Yeah. Hey, maybe, less, you, how wait, about just some less? Wait, wait, wait. Why don't you go back to that? That was one of your first Generation One Tom Schwartz merch, wasn't it? <laughs> Officially chilling. You should go back to that. Bring it back. Your your cloak of all things chill. Yes. Is wait, uh, that was a good little shtick. Your way it to was. let the world know that you're taking it easy. You should say 2024, the year of chill, and then have into your ice cream logo. You were to hear first, right? Yeah. I think that's a good what idea. What are you doing for? Are you guys doing anything for Valentine's Day? <sighs> Man, um, I got to do something big. I got to do something big. I've been slacking in the romance department again. And, yeah. you know, it's just, it's so hard when you have a kid, you got your shows, you got podcast, you got, and like I said, I'm, my kid just takes a lot of my time that sometimes I've just, I, I put my relationship on the back burner and it's, it's Bar's tough. We all it do it. Easier. The bar doesn't make it easier. And I'm not saying I'm going out and getting drunk, but I feel like an obligation that I have to be there. 100%. Like when you said, when yes. you started your bar and I was always after you, I'm always like, why are you at your bar so much? Why do you do this? And now I said this to you the other last weekend, I'm like, I feel feel like as a I just have a big heart and I, I here's a funny story so last weekend my the bar was the busiest it's ever been and I felt so bad my friends were all there I kind of ghosted all my friends I went back in the kitchen I go guys what can I do to make your life better can I give you some drinks some shots whatever they're like Jax can you go get us a speaker a JBL speaker I go done left my the football game went to the store bought him a JBL speaker and those guys were so happy so and I didn't have I was out of a bus boy my bus boy got arrested so I was helping everybody clean up but it's just something about, sorry, something about owning your own bar. You just feel like I just want to help and I want to be there. And I feel like people are spending their time coming to my bar that yeah. I owe them mm -hmm. something. Back, by the way, let's take a moment just to shout out all the back. Uh, first of all, everyone who works in the hospitality industry, but especially back of the house, you know, underappreciated, often goes without thanks, aside from the occasional like compliments to the chef bullshit. But like, seriously, shout out to the back of the house, man. 
yeah. holding it down. Oh my god, they were. I've never seen those guys. They were crazy. Dough was flying because they were making pizza. There's pizza in the air. There's dough in the air. Wings are going out. The girls are stressed out. People are yelling. My food's taking this long and this long and this long. It's just like chaos. And we were both in that world for a long time, so we understand it. And I think. Excuse me. I think that's why we care so much about our business. It's not that we want to go there and get drunk. No, not we want to go there and help and make the business thrive and help that our weight staff out because we've been there. We know what it's like to grind and to, to work hard and just be, you know, co to people like, what can I do to help you? Anything we can do to help our staff. I think that's just where we come. And I said this to you the other week and I go, I totally get it now. Like I literally said this to you the other day. I'm like, I understand why you're at your bar now because you just feel like you need to be there. You owe it to them. You want to help and you want everyone to be happy. And I just, the most important thing to me is my wait staff, making them happy. Yes, exactly. Because so without them, everything Take care of your wait apart. staff. Make sure at, at, when you guys out, make sure you always tip your bartenders because they're working really, really hard. And, um, and it's super important. And I said this on Good Day LA today. It's so obvious, but like, you know, like if you're on a date and it's like one of the biggest red flags of all time is when you see someone be disrespectful Oh. or discourteous or just like condescending to a, a server or a bus boy, a host, anybody, a bartender. And I, I'm not going to lie. It's I've done it a couple huge... times. I've done it a few times. Yeah. You've actually caught me on it a few times. Like, you know, when I'm drunk and then I just don't pay attention or I don't tip enough or I'm just rude. Like I've done it and I've caught myself and I've literally had to go back and apologize because I just feel yeah. awful after doing that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure everyone's done it at some point, but it's, yeah. Just a couple quick shout outs. I want to give a happy Ooh. 60th birthday to my partner, Roger. He's going to turn 60 this Friday. We're very excited. Uh, also, people have been asking me about the shirts that I use to work out. And I use the same shirts when I work out because they're super comfortable. But I absolutely love the shirts. It's called Quince. Um, you can find them on social media. It's Q-U-I-N-C-E. Uh, they're the most comfortable shirts that I've ever had on. And I love them. So a lot of you have been asking about that. Uh, do you have any shout outs that you want to give? Anybody hmm. you want to say hi to? Do you got any future projects? Let's see. Um, um, I invite, Obviously, Vanderpump Rules is starting tonight. Yeah, VPR is starting tonight. Um, give a shout out to everyone at Passion Tree. I'm a proud investor in that seltzer company. And also, just like shout out to my partner, Greg. He's been, you know, we went through some weird times in that bar in the past, you know, six months. It got a little rocky there, but, um, you know, he's been keeping it together behind the scenes. So shout out to my partner, Greg. And uh, shout out to Franklin Village. Shout out to Bird. Shout out to La Poubelle. Shout out to Creation. Shout out to La Villa Cantina. Shout out to the Oaks. Shout out to the Gelsons across the street. <laughs> I fucking love Franklin Village. I don't know if it was the right place to put Schwartz and Sandy's, but I stand by it. I love it. And um, I'm a proud to be part of that neighborhood. And also, oh, dude. You got to come to brunch at TomTom. Tom. We got brunch now, baby. I didn't know that. So yeah. when did that start? I know. We got brunch tw- uh, noon, to f- noon to five, Saturday and Sunday. I will be there. And um, it's really fun, dude. That's awesome. No, that's really, really cool. You need cool. a little wee in your life. I do. I do. It's hard to get over that hill once you move to the valley. Um, also, just a little shout out to all the uh, flight attendants and the people that work at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little hostile on social media at the airports lately, but give them a little love. Yeah, show them a little love, man. Sorry, Tom. I forgot to ask you. Uh, oh. You asked me what I was doing for Valentine's Day. The, I think the question, the big question is everybody knows what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be with my wife and my son. Yeah. But the big question is... What is Tom Schwartz going to be doing on Valentine's Day? Now, you don't have to give us a name okay. or, or that, but are, do you have plans? I can give you a name and a place. Whoa. A name and a place what? I'm going to be in Toronto. You're going to be in Toronto? Yeah, I'm actually, where, I'm actually um, I, I forget the name of the place. I think it's called Tr- uh, Trist. What, is it a club? Yeah, Thrist. It's a bar club, and I'm going to be making drinks for the single ladies, the single dudes. Wait, is this before come... Montreal? Yeah, it's on the Maybe 14th. Maybe I should come out with you. I would love if you came out with me. But well, Brittany, um, let me go. So you're going to be you're, okay, you're gonna I'm going to be, be there. But okay. I, you know, I, do I have a romantic interest? Yeah. Are you going to make it up to her when you get back or before? Um, Both. And where are you going to take I mean, her? I'm not... Hey, well, we don't have to get into that. I'm just hanging out, man. It's weird. I don't know. It's weird, um, but I'm I'm happy right now. I'm just doing my thing. And that's and that's all anybody can ask for, as long yeah. as you're happy. Hey, quick thing. Favorite sandwich shop in LA? Whoa. Did not see that coming, but um, I, I, so there's this new place called We O U I on Melrose that has killer sandwiches. But um, like my go-to is all about the bread, which is also on Melrose. Um, and uh, I like Giada's. Yeah, and I like. Um, I said one, Tom. Okay, thank you. Okay, <laughs> Hell, I'm even. I'm, I'm even down with Subway. All right, I, no way. I, I got this new place called Amici's. Oh, I'm obsessed. Whoa. I'm obsessed. Their pizza is amazing. It's almost comparable to Costco, which is my favorite pizza. And they also have the delicious subs, which remind me from back home. My favorite sub shop back home in Michigan is called Buscemi's. It's absolutely amazing. But anyway, try Amici's here. This is not an ad. If you guys live in North Hollywood, go to Amici's. Anyway, 
Signing out. I think we had a great day. Solid. We job. got a we got a really really busy afternoon. Tom's got to get out of here. Yeah. I got to get out of here. We got to get ready for our premiere night. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tom, for stopping in. I really really appreciate it. Love All you, right. brother. Love you too, man. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Hopefully, Brittany will be back. And yeah, we're out of here. Take Ooh. it easy, guys. Let's go. Cool.